Hello, hello, welcome back to the first five. I know that it has been a minute, you guys. I'm so sorry. A friend of mine actually recommended that I get these cool little microphones so that you can hear me better. And I'm just technologically illiterate. And so it took me a really long time to, to get this baby up and running. It's small, but it's a real pain in the ass and I had to buy different cords and you know what? But here we are now and hopefully you can you can hear me better. The lighting looks pretty good. And yeah, I'm new to these YouTube videos, but it's a really fun platform and I'm excited to share this long form content with you guys, particularly in the form of the fast five. The fast five? No, the first five. Just the first five pages of your screenplays that you submit and I tell you what I think of them, what's great, what is bumping, what could be better, and really how to make an impact in those crucial opening pages of your script. So let's jump right in. Today I have a script called Who We Are. It is a pilot from Alexander Kuropos, Kuropos. I hope that I'm not butchering your last name. And I just do little you know, skims of these before I get started. And I have to say, I'm really, really excited about this one. It feels like a fun action thriller and uh, it looks really promising. And so I'm excited to, to go through it with you guys. So here we go. So we open on Angeles National Forest in the morning, a beautiful image, you know, a sullen forest, morning fog and dew are anointed. So we've got some poetic nice visual imagery there. And then we hear a man panting, panting. I don't know why you guys, I just cannot talk today. Panting in exhaustion. And we get the superimposition that this is in 2023. A panic stricken author Ballion 32 is fleeing through the brush and trees. Okay, so what is he, what is he running from? We don't know. I have the feeling we're about to find out. So now we're earlier in Arthur's house meticulously adorned with records that have gone gold and platinum. Okay, so he's a musician, equal parts artist, psychoanalyst, and idealist. I'm not quite sure what that means, but maybe we'll see. Watches TV in shock and awe as the president delivers an emergency televised speech. My fellow Americans. Okay, so we are having a nuclear attack with North Korea. That is the setting here. And now we're back in the forest. Branches are snapping under his feet, emerging in the dense woods. Okay, so we get the feeling that he's he's trying to run away from some sort of giant catastrophe. The stakes are very, very high. And that's a lot of action and adrenaline and fast-paced movement as we move right into page two. Okay, we're back to Ar Arthur's house. We're gonna get some more information. Uh, the president is saying on television, that the military forces were incapable of countering, but no, actually they can. And they're launching their own ICBMs in retaliation. Shit's going down, right? Things are bad. Chime, a text message comes through on Arthur's phone. It's from an unknown sender and it says it's time. Okay, so is he somehow involved in this plot? Like what's happening? What is the situation? I don't know, but I want to keep reading to find out. Okay, we're back in the forest now and we're at the entrance of a bunker. Okay, so this makes sense. It's nuclear war. He's going to hunker down and go into the bunker. So Arthur approaches the structure. The rusted crimson door is made of steel and reinforced to withstand a blast. It just the writing here is really solid. It's propulsive and it's and it's quick, but it's descriptive. You can tell by how fast I'm talking. It's like matching the pace of the action of of this pilot. Um, zhroom, a thunderous blast comes from the distance. We've got that mushroom cloud. Holy shit. The ground rumbles and roars beneath him. Now, from my understanding, if you see the mushroom cloud, you are already dead meat, but it's a great visual image for the opening of a pilot. We're back to his house. The display reads, he's got another text and it says, remember your code. Whether that's a code of conduct or like an actual code to get into this bunker, I think we'll soon find out. And then the president says, there's no easy way to say this. We expect impact within the hour. 
May God have mercy on us all. Cool. I'm digging it. All right. We're on to page three again. This might be the fastest video I've ever recorded because this is just such a fast script. We're back in the forest. We're back at the bunker. Arthur's trying to find a way in. Obviously, the stakes are high because we saw that mushroom cloud. Pulling out his phone, he searches for the code that he saved. So, okay, this is the literal code. Enters the five number code, a buzzer goes off, and the door slides open. I love this use of um, sound effects as well. I think that's, that's really fun. And as long as it's consistent, you can kind of do it however you want, but, but this feels fun and again, propulsive. Um, from inside the bunker, we see a light cutting through the darkness and he sees a dimly lit corridor, takes an anxious glance back to the forest and makes his way into this unknown bunker. So now we're in the bunker, it's a dark abyss. He's using his phone to light the way and he comes to another door, another keypad, enters the same code and all of a sudden, we're on page four, again, so fast, a blinding light breaks through the darkness as his eyes adjust. He peers through to find that he's not alone. There are three other people facing Arthur inside of this underground bunker. So it's like, what is happening? And then we cut to main titles. I wish there was some sort of button on all of that, like a line or just another moment to kind of button that before we get to main titles. Um, but still, really fun. Okay, so let's keep going here. So now we're back in the bunker. He's walking inside. Confusion on his face matches that of the other three. And then the door closes. He's trying to assess his surroundings, so we get a little description of where we are. The bunker is damp. Really like a great description of what this place looks like. I would say anytime I see a big chunk of action like that, my eyes kind of tend to skip over it. So if there are specific things that you want to really highlight in that chunk, I would do it a little bit more um, sparsely or break up that big chunk a bit, similarly to the way that you broke up the people that we're going to see. We have Richard Coleman, Hannah Hamilton, and Junie Seung. Um, rages of ages and and genders and and you know diverse group of people here. As the blast door closes behind Arthur, we've got this digital clock and starts a timer counting upward. Okay, and Junie's saying, did the upstairs door close? And he's really shaken up. Just like, hey, are you okay? On to page five. I'm sorry, what did you say? Did the upstairs door close? So she's nervous, like, is there any air getting in here? Is this an airtight bunker? And he says, yes. He says he almost fell down the stairs and he makes a joke. He says, would be an ironic time to almost break your neck, right? Which is true, that would be ironic. And then Richard kind of is the, the patriarch of, of this group, it seems. Well, you're safe now. Um, introducing himself, his friends call him Dickie. Given the circumstances, I'd say that makes us friends too. I, I like that as well, or it makes us close to friends. Arthur introduces himself. Pleasure to meet you. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Alexander, like, claps to you. I think this is a great opening of a pilot. It is propulsive, which is like the buzzword that I've said for this episode. I think I've said it 80,000 times, but it really is exciting. It's page turning. You saw how quickly I went through it. It just, you want to keep going. You want to keep reading. The descriptions are great. They're minimal, but they're vibrant and um, they've got a lot of character. It feels like you have a clear voice in your writing, but it also feels like a voice that's familiar. It feels like a voice that I've read on procedural shows before. Yeah, it's exciting. I'm a huge fan of shows like 24 and Prison Break and Lost, those 2000s 
shows that um, were again all fun and propulsive and broadcast and, and, and this really feels like that to me in a very fun nostalgic way. I think it's, again, I think it's great as is, but what can we do to maybe hype it up a little bit more? Um, the first thing I would say is on page one, when you have panic-stricken Arthur and you have that moment of him racing through the trees, I would milk it a little bit more. Give us a little bit more. I know you're gonna cut back to that, but give us that opening image of we hear him panting, we hear the branches crackling under his feet, Give us those tight shots of him panicking, freaking out, running, tripping. Make a bigger meal out of that opening moment and kind of convey the terror and the panic as he's running through. Convey the urgency before we cut to his living room. And I, you could even say smash to his living room. And so we kind of see it's we're keeping up that urgency the entire opening. Again, you get that more the the crunch, the branches under his feet as he's walking in the next scene in the forest, but hit us with it right in the opening. I think that would be it's it's a little bit heftier and pulls us in faster. And then as I said, oh something interesting might be it's a little bit of a double beat, right? The two doors with the same code. So is there something else to kind of complicate the situation a little bit more? Is it a different code that he might've forgotten? Um, you know, when we get the text that says, remember your code, I almost wonder if in a moment of panic, you know, he's trying, he only gets three chances and he messes up twice. Something, just something again to heighten that urgency, heighten the panic, raise the stakes. Otherwise, the double doors feel a bit like a double beat in the story. And then finally, like I said, the, the main title's situation, some sort of button, like in Lost, if I can remember correctly, you know, it's Jack and he's there and there's the dog, I think, and then he's running through the woods, running through the, the jungle. And then we open and we see the plane crash and then it cuts to titles. I just don't think necessarily that just seeing three other people in the bunker is enough of a snap to titles. Finally, I guess my only question is how important is the upstairs door closing? because obviously this upstairs door closing situation takes up a lot of real estate. Obviously, I, I assume that it's that it's life or death, but are there other lines? Like, do you need that whole, is she more like upset about it? Is she more like, tell, did it close? Did it close? Like, is there more urgency? Give us a little bit more there with Junie and her character. I think Richard seems pretty clear. He's you know, like the nice, the nice dad of the bunch. Um, but yeah, I, I would just give that moment right after this other man comes in. Like, if she wants to know if he closed the door, this is life or death for all of them. Because if he didn't close the door, then, you know, the nuclear air can get in. But other than that, Alexander, I want to read the rest of it. So um, if you want, feel free to send it my way. I just... I think this is really cool and I'm I'm pumped. The first the first five really got me. I think there's something exciting here. I would definitely keep reading a hundred percent. And um, I hope you keep writing because this is really solid. If you would like for me to read your first five here on the interwebs, just go to the link in the episode notes or in my bio on TikTok or Twitter or Instagram, and uh, you can submit your own. You just fill out a form and then it sends you an email to tell you exactly what you need to do to submit. Also, I'm going to be starting a, a Substack, or by the time this comes out, I will have started a Substack. And the Substack will basically be a, a weekly newsletter, a free weekly newsletter where I go in depth on um, more topics that I talk about on 
on TikTok and, and on Twitter, kind of delving a little bit deeper than I can in, in a tweet or a three minute video. But also there is going to be a paid subscriber section. So for $5 a month or $50 a year, which obviously is a discount, you are able to get not only 20% off of any script note sessions that you wanna have with me, uh, you also get an additional weekly newsletter email from me that is um, a little bit more in-depth stuff. I have some fun series that I'm doing, also some uh, write a script guides where I kind of give you some blueprints and templates that I use in my own work. And also one of the cool perks is that if you are a subscriber of the Substack, I will boost your submission for the first five all the way to the top of the pile. So it's not a guarantee that your script will get read, but I have, you know, like a hundred scripts sitting in my inbox that I'm so excited to try to get to, but obviously I can't get to them all. And so if you are a subscriber of the Substack, then your script gets bumped up to the front of the line. So you might have a script that's really, really solid, like Alexander's here that you want to read. So um, in that case, I would say definitely subscribe to the Substack and it'll definitely get my eyes on it a bit quicker. Anyways, thank you guys so much for being patient with the release of this episode. Let me know if you liked the mic in the comments. I, I don't know. I, I think it sounds pretty good. I did a test test one, two, three. So, but thank you so much again, Alexander, and I will see y'all next time.